Right, so I'm back with another episode of Tath 5 Mods, the weekly series where I look at mods. As for the Fallout 4 updates, there's still no mods available for PlayStation 4. In other news, water is still wet. But yeah, all we have is this tweet from the 1st of August and since then there has been radio silence. So um, yeah, maybe one day the PS4 users will finally have access to mods, but I guess until then they've just got the window shop. Anyways, let's roll that intro. So I still haven't heard a peep from Preston, which is making me slightly uneasy. Maybe it's quiet before the storm. I get the feeling he might be building up a synth army behind my back to try and overthrow me so he can become the general of the Minutemen. Which I really would not mind, because then he could go deal with all those settlements instead of me. Anyways, enough about settlements, this week at number 5 we've got Xander's 8 Dash Official. So this is a quest adventure mod, it started out as just an interesting way of getting the Firelands and grew into something a tad bit larger. To start it, you'll have to go to the Dugout Inn in Diamond City and talk to Xander. Now apparently Xander is a pre-war ghoul that received a facelift. And he's willing to pay you a whopping 600 caps to go find his friend Jay, who might have been held up in a hole in the ground at the edge of the glowing sea when the bombs dropped. So you have to go to this decaying reactor site that has some saucers slammed into the side of it, open a hatch, then pick the world's easiest lock to the storage room, and take some goodies. Also make sure you take the silverware as it might come in handy when you decide to throw a dinner party one day. But then it's time to finding out what happened to Jay. So from the terminals you learn that Jay was living in his hole in the ground with Danny, and one day Jay decided to go away. So then you have to find out what happened to Danny. You should open his barred door, then go through the cave and find another terminal. Apparently Danny got let into Vault 141, so you take the key from behind the filing cabinet and venture into the vault. And this place is infested with rat rat roaches and mole rats, so you have to shoot your way through them and make your way up to the overseer's office. Now from the terminal up there, you learn that apparently this vault was falling apart and radiation was seeping in. So some people dug their way out to the vault's primordial bio cube. So you make your way through the dugout tunnel and step into the bio cube. Now this is a whole new area you can explore. Apparently there's also aliens in this cube. So you make your way across the bridge downtown where apparently there is a war going on and seemingly everything was to kill you. There's Sins, Brotherhood of Steel, Raiders, Gunners. There's also a Myrler Queen. Absolutely disgusting. But it was right about then that I decided that this was really not worth the mere 600 caps that Xander was offering me. But this mod sets you off on an adventure that has you using your brain somewhat as you have to look around for clues and keys instead of just having a giant quest marker pointing at everything. Which is a, a nice change of pace. And Xander's voice acting is also pretty good. That perhaps there's a chance that he survived. If he did, then his greatest chance was that vault. He's in a vault in the glowing sea. I could use some fresh air. Sweet. Although I never did find that Firelands, so I need an easier to acquire firearm. And what better than the Sturmgewehr 44-STG44, which is the world's first assault rifle. They say that you just can't beat German engineering. So to get your hands on this thing, you'll have to go to the Museum of Witchcraft, try and enter through the front door, only to realize that it's chained up. So walk around past the model part body and go in through the basement entrance. Once inside, just ignore the sense of death claws and people getting chopped into tiny pieces. Then also ignore the jump scare and pick up your very own Sturmgewehr 44. Then casually run the fuck back the other way. Unfortunately, I forgot which way, so I was kind of stuck in there for a bit. But eventually, I made my way out. So this thing is pretty cool. It fires the 792 by 33 Kurtz round. So it packs a decent punch. Now the gun itself is decently customizable, you can attach a fair amount of scopes, some different barrels, receivers and stocks, but most importantly, a drum mag. It also looks great, the only downside is that the reloading animation does not fit in 100%, but I keep reading that that is a really difficult thing to do, so maybe one day we'll have good looking reloading animations. But that's when I had this weird feeling there was somebody right behind me. So I slowly turned around and I saw a wild pack of Tinker Tops just standing there, staring at me. So without a second of doubt, I opened fire with my Sturmgewehr. The drum mag really helped me just lay down that suppressive fire. Now I thought I'd dealt with this situation already, but somehow they're back. I'm getting the feeling something fishy is going on here. But anyway, since I'm in a Germanic mood now, I'm going to get myself a Panzerhund to guard me from these Tinkertown clones. So to get your very own Panzerhund, you have to go to the robotics disposal grounds just east of Fault 111. Go inside and talk to the giant metal thing with legs. Now, Panzer behaves pretty much the same as any other dog, except he has gigantic robotic teeth, weighs about a ton, and makes weird sounds. But he seems to be able to fight off just standard boring dogs quite easily, so ripping apart Tinker Tom should be no problem either. Anyway, speaking of ripping things apart, at number 3 this week we've got Skinning in a Commonwealth Deathclaw Armor. So this mod allows you to craft your very own Wasteland Critter Armor. In the building menu it adds in a new skinning workbench. 
At this workbench you are able to craft Deathclaw Armor for those who want to look deadly, Minor Lurk Armor for those who like swimming, a Rat Stack Hood for those who want to look stylish, and Mole Rat Armor. I honestly don't know why you'd want to look like a walking testicle sack, but now you can, I guess. So to craft these armor pieces you'll need leather of that specific animal which will be on their corpse. So say you want some glowing deathclaw armor, well you'll need some glowing deathclaw leather. Aside from that you also need some antiseptic, screws and steel. The deathclaw armors come in light, medium and heavy flavor and once you've crafted your favorite suit you can upgrade it or paint it at an armor workbench. It was time to go hunt down some deathclaws. So I went back to the Museum of Witchcraft and suddenly there were 5 glowing deathclaws where I picked up my Sturmgewehr. I started shooting and blew one deathclaw's head off. To my surprise, he still had the strength to lift me up through the ceiling. Anyhow, I recovered and killed the ones that were in the basement. The last one was trying to teleport to a different dimension seemingly, but he was pretty easily disposed of too. And with that letter I could finally craft my very own beautiful glowing heavy deathclaw armor. But that was not good enough, I also decided to add a lick of paint to it. I'm still not really sure whether or not this meat suit will actually stop bullets, but it does look cool. But in case you want to hunt down all flavors, you've also got vanilla, albino, alpha, matriarch, mythic, and finally savage. Now this deathclaw armor kind of reminds me of this armor I was wearing in this weird dream I had. Now in this dream everybody kept telling me I had to go kill this one dragon in particular. And there were these town's guards that kept complaining about getting shot in the kneecap by arrows. Some would call that a nightmare. Anyways at number 2 we've got Hobby Horse. So this mod allows you to beat people to death with a horse on a stick. Pretty straightforward. To get your hands on these bad boys you'll have to go to Spectacle Island, climb on top of this one piece of rubble in particular. Just make sure you're right on top of that. And spin around exactly 3 times, and if you then look up you'll see a bundle of hobby horses falling down from the sky. How convenient. So this thing can be upgraded with 3 additional levels at a weapons workbench. Level 1 just looks like a plain old wooden horse. At level 2 you get a nice coat of red paint on your horse. Level 3 gives your horse glowing red eyes. And finally level 4 changes your horse into a unicorn. The pointy end should make it a tad bit more lethal. Now these things look okay, not extremely practical as a melee weapon. They also seem to take up about half of your screen but they do look okay. But that's when I heard it, a group of Mario like kings was trying to flank me. So I stopped horsing around and started beating them to death with my carousel stick. It was decently effective at beating heads off. I still prefer my Sturmgewehr but these horse heads were good enough. But if you decide to go around beating things with these horse heads, they do seem to assemble a layer of blood. So you gotta bring some tissues with you. But yeah, I'm not sure whether or not I like this deathclaw helmet. I mean it looks pretty badass, but these horns kind of get in the way. They're a bit too uh, pointy and not very comfortable. So luckily we've also got the headpiece dispatcher, new radar helmets and masks. So this mod adds in a whopping 9 helmets and masks to the game. Most of them are sold by this voice trader called McCoy at the very edge of the glowing sea, which just seems like a prime location for commerce. Anyhow you make your way over there and try and save him from the bloatfly that's trying to kill him, then accidentally blow up the car behind him. Now when he gets back up he's a bit upset with you, so you have to pacify him with your brand spanky new horse head. But once that's over which you can trade with him. He's fully voiced and has a decently fleshed out backstory. There's also more dialogue options. My god. I didn't even know there were more than 4 things you could say at any given point in time. So apparently he is part of a trading network that specializes in headgear. And you also get to find out how he wound up at the edge of the glowing sea, which is just definitely swarming with customers. You can also ask him about the helmets he sells, at which point you get horribly interrupted by yet another bloatfly. But with enough suppressive fire and collateral damage you should be able to take it down and resume asking questions. So the voice acting is pretty okay. You could probably shoot me in the head right now and I would be fine. Huh. Well I guess he wasn't lying. But I went on this adventure for the helmet so I have to try them all. The ones that McCoy does not sell you can craft at a chemistry station so first up we've got the anti-riot helmet. Bullet resistant as you've just witnessed. It comes in an open and a closed model. I don't know I might go for this one. It looks pretty cool. We've also got the German knight helmet which would go rather well with my Sturmgewehr. Then we've got the pit boy mask which fits right in with my red shoulder piece but it kinda makes me look like a serial killer. So I think I might pass on this one. The pussy slayer headpiece is uh, eccentric. But what's with me running this cat sanctuary now I feel like I just can't be running around with a dead cat on my head. It kinda just gives out the wrong message. But we also got two raider gas masks that can be worn with the dead cat to really just complete the eccentric look. Or version 3 of the Raider Gas Mask, looking through the license plates isn't all that easy but you do look cool with the American flag, along with some scribbles. And finally we've got the Tin Can Gas Mask. 
I don't know why McCoy felt the need to make a gas mask out of a tin can, but it does look sleek. I don't know, I'm finding it hard to decide. They all look pretty good. So yeah, well, I take out some time to really just think about this. Uh, it's time for the bonus mount of this week. So we've got Kerb's Miltauros. So this mount replaces the Brahmin with Miltauros. Now what are Miltauros? Well, I'm not sure either, but they seem to be Brahmin with some extra horns, a weird looking coat of paint and glowing bulbs at the end of their tails. I think the Brahmin were trying to genetically alter themselves at their defeat last time and accidentally threw in some Christmas lights. Anyways, I had no choice but to put them out of their misery, and interestingly enough their heads explode into their old heads. Well that was it for this week's match, yet again some very solid mods in there. What headpiece will I pick? What's going on with the Prestons and Tinker Toms? Find out potentially next week, or not. It, it really depends. But until then... See, I guess some behind the scenes information. I had a lot of crashes this time around, which was one weird thing. The game just kept crashing for some reason. I think it's got something to do with the script extender and the new patch or something. But then I also had this really weird bug. Like, I think it seems to be connected to the Deathclaw armor. But my character would just turn black. Just only his face. Like, he got a really good suntan. It was just the weirdest thing. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong about me being black, but it's just weird when the front side of your face is black and the rest of your body is white as a. As a, what is white? As a sheet of A4 paper, which all of your Europeans will get. If you're from America, it's, it's like the standard size of paper. You guys use some kind of weird paper format. Anyways, the point here is that it's just the weirdest fucking bug. But I'll tell you, I think out of anyone playing this game, I've probably found the most bugs. I, I've seen every freaking bug out there. I keep finding waves of bugs. I need some freaking bug spray. But anyways, that was most of the things I had to ramble on about. I could go on about my GoPro, which had a hardware fault. Which is not a bug, so that's a relief, right? But uh, yeah, make sure you actually like the video. These ones take a, a pretty long time to create for just one video, so I would actually appreciate a like, which does sort of help me out. And also remember to uh, watch the video in the bottom left corner and subscribe, and uh, see knows about it. So uh, until next time.